two, one. What is up, travel heads? I'm your host, Brian from Life of BD, and I welcome you to Talk with BD. Today's guest is a flight attendant, and I got a lot of questions to ask her about being a flight attendant during the coronavirus pandemic. So without further ado, Tiffany. Hi, everybody. My name is Tiffany Nguyen, and I'm a flight attendant. Um, I'm originally from California, uh, based in Philadelphia. I've been a flight attendant for about five to going on six years now. And um, I've been to 50 states in America. Oh, just, wow. You know, all, all 50. Yeah, 50. <laughs> okay, that's that's cool. Um, How's the baby anyway? Baby's good. He's growing really big. He's okay. a, you know, big baby. Mm -hmm. I pushed out an eight pounder, dude. Yeah. <laughs> For all of you that don't know, um, I actually didn't know she had a baby until like last week. <laughs> but yeah, um, so you've been a flight attendant for like five years or so, five to six years almost. Um, five years ago, we flew out to New York City, you know, and that was the last time I seen you. How's life since then? Um, well, life as a flight attendant is still exciting to me after, you know, all these years. Um, my schedule is unpredictable, which is the thing I love about it. Like my job is unpredictable. I don't know where I'm going all the time. And you know, it's fun, exciting, something new. Mm -hmm. um, also my schedule for this year, like January to March, it was like jam packed. And then all of a sudden in April, it was like dead okay. because um, you know how like the coronavirus affected everybody and also affect the flights and not that many people are flying anymore. So that that's kind of scary because a lot of politicians thought that they're going to lose their job because of, you know, the the flying declined. Okay. Do you feel like some people have lost their job already? Um, some airlines unfortunately, I can't name them yeah. all, and you know, the some my airline we're we're surviving, but you know, mm -hmm. I still fear that my job's going to be lost. All right. Thankfully, you still have it at the moment, you know, and you're OG in this, so you're not the first yeah. one to get cut, if anything, right? So Yeah, dude, yep. Not gonna be the first one to get cut. <laughs> How does it feel living so close to the epicenter state for COVID-19? Hmm. It's actually really scary because, you know, um, I have a neighbor whose mom is, uh, she lives in the epicenter or near there. Mm -hmm. He comes and, you know, he uh, goes there every other week, I think. And whenever we're um, home, but we're not able to get our newspaper because our newspaper is like dropped outside in front of our door. He puts it in our mailbox because usually like dogs or, you know, squirrels or something comes and steals it. I don't know why, but hmm. it's just around my neighborhood. And, you know, my neighbor, he's really nice to do that, but we're kind of scared that he, when he touches our newspaper and we get it, we're going to get the, you know, Oh yeah, the especially on him being out there in New York, basically, right? Also. Yeah, we're not like trying to judge or anything anything but it's just it's scary and we have to like you know spray the newspaper down with Lysol before we touch it yeah I'm yeah. doing that with my Costco stuff everything's getting <laughs> Lysol sprayed so so I get it I get it so yeah so how are you managing with all this cutting hours so April alone you don't even have any upcoming work for you no I actually have like zero hours wow. how are you yeah. managing with that um it's hard, but I mean, I applied for unemployment. Hopefully okay. they'll accept me, but at the same time, I'm still considered as a working flight attendant. So I don't know how that's gonna go. And I hope like, you know, a stimulus check hits my bank before my bills come. Okay. So there's that, like, I'm just, you know, relying on stimulus check and um, relying on the unemployment. And if those don't help me, then, I mean, I still have backup money that I saved up, but, you know, it'll, it'll run up sometime, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of sucks and scary. You might have to sell that Porsche. I know, right? <laughs> I have kidding. to, I might. Yeah, <laughs> might. But, yeah um, those unemployment check, I think you'll get it, you know? Cause it's like, especially if you're not making the same amount as you were like the last month, I think you're able mm -hmm. to still get it. Just not as much cause you're still a worker or so. <laughs> But right, right. Most likely you're going to go back to work on in May. So how are you going to, um, how do you feel about working so closely with p other people while at work? Like as a flight attendant, you have to interact with people. How do you feel about that? Um, I mean, 
I'm more careful and I feel like there's a lot of people who are careful as well. So I kind of feel somewhat safe because usually when passengers come on, they already have gloves, they have their Clorox wipes, they have mask on, they're like, you know, they're prepared and I feel safe when they have it. But, you know, when I see passengers who are coughing with like they're like coughing into their hands or coughing around, I just kind of like stay away from them. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like, I'm just like, you know, saying like, oh, you need anything? You need water, you know? Mm-hmm. And then um, I quickly go to the back and just get them whatever they need. But if they don't need anything, I just stay like completely away from them. Okay. So kind of like practicing social distancing mm-hmm. and, you know, the six feet rule and everything like that. Also, do you still, you guys can't really do that at work, can you? Like, cause the seats are um, so narrow or? Um, Actually, like um, there's, only probably like 10 people per flight uh, and you know our airplanes uh, have like 178 uh seats yeah. can you believe that it's like crazy yeah. and then uh the gate agents are really good at like separating the passengers okay. so they're like very very far away from each other and then like um my company gave out masks just recently and oh. they gave out more gloves and more hand sanitizers so um we're able to just keep ourselves uh protected and then the, we're practicing a uh, six feet rule. Mm-hmm. Um, what else are we practicing? Um, we also do not do service anymore. So it's only by request, which is kind of interesting. Like they um, they just recently told us to uh, make sure that we don't open like the can of uh, soda oh. and just put a cup on top of it and just hand it to the passengers. Okay. Um, yeah, by request only. We do not serve whatsoever, even in first class too, which is surprising to me. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah that's then... interesting. If I pay first class, I'm like, hey, you got to open that can for me. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> not during this. Not during this time. I'm like, hey, yeah, just, know, just like... let me do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Like, um, we actually, uh, the, the fare for first class dropped dramatically. It's about, you know, like $400 Ooh. or less. And then um, domestic flights are like 20 bucks. Like, it was so surprising to me. It was like 20 bucks going from uh, California to Philadelphia at one wow. point. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Sounds mm-hmm. like I should pay a visit. <laughs> Why not? I got an extra room. <laughs> yeah. No, I think I will just stay in California and not take the risk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, smart, smart. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Um, have you ever had an incident where someone was sick and other passengers complained about them? Especially of how things are now? Yes, actually, I did. Um, one time I was working in, uh, I was working the back of the plane, like all the way in the back, and there was a, a man who was coughing, and he was coughing so bad that it woke up some of the passengers around him. This was like a nighttime flight. And um, he didn't even like try covering his mouth at all, which was like disgusting. And he was like coughing in front of like the screen. Um, you know, when you're sitting, uh, what is it called again? What is the screens called? Just screens in front of the monitor the TV, seat. the monitor TV, something like yeah. that. Yeah, he was coughing into it, and then another passenger next to him went up to the back and told me about it. And I was like, "Sir, can you please cover your mouth? Because you know a lot of passengers are uncomfortable with you coughing out loud. And I mean, not coughing out loud, like just coughing in general. And um, we're not sure if, uh, you're sick or not. So you know, can you please just do that?" And he got really, really angry, and he was like, "I have." allergies i can't help it do you have allergy medication and i'm like no mm-hmm. but you know just try to cough on your elbow yes. or you know do the just, dab yeah and just drink some water or hot tea but um i gave him a water bottle and just kind of like washed after him afterwards okay. was this yeah, um, a lot of people are, mm-hmm. oh, sorry was this during the um this virus or yeah was it was it? in oh. march okay yeah, so that was when everything people. started was everyone was getting paranoid and stuff. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, it wasn't as bad because there was like a lot of passengers on my flight, but then like, um, it's just, you know, uh, people knew about the COVID-19 mm-hmm. and just was paranoid. Flight attendants are pretty scared of flying too. Okay. And then they choose not to fly. Like they, uh, our company gave us like options for like absence of leave and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, like they can decide if they don't want to like fly or not and then plus there's so much you know um 
flights that are canceled mm-hmm. that the company can't like afford to pay the flight attendants anymore so they kind of like they don't want to furlough us but they they gave us the option to like do absence of leave for like three months nine months or 12 months okay i mean that's pretty good and then um a lot of flight attendants took it but not enough like people still want to fly and stuff mm-hmm. like you know the junior flight attendants they're not scared of anything like i don't know why <laughs> um yeah like the senior flight attendants they're uh they're like cool staying home and everything but then the junior flight attendants are scared to uh i mean not scared to fly they want to take the, the trips since they're like only probably like 10 plus i mean less than that people on the flight so it's kind of like easy for them i guess yeah. but at the same time it's just like um the, uh it's it's just i don't know like people just i don't know how to say it like <laughs> I'm like running out of like vocabulary for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> like, um, junior flight attendants. What are junior flight attendants? Oh, junior flight attendants are pretty much like, uh, probably six to seven years or lower, and then senior flight attendants are like seven years and okay. up. Like they've been working for that long. But I mean, that's my take on it. Some flight attendants disagree. It might be like you know, one, two, three years are juniors and rest are seniors but to me i think seven years is and down is junior and then seven years and up is senior as a flight attendant are you like scared to go on a flight nowadays i mean yeah of course because i have a newborn baby Mm -hmm. and i'm scared to bring you know the virus back home but uh what i do to prevent or try to prevent it is that like i care my husband puts a lysol bottle in my purse and um i leave it in the car once i get to my car i spray myself down okay um, and then I get in my car, go home. Then I take off my shoes, like my in-flight shoes, and I like um, throw it in a plastic bag, tie it up, leave it outside. I do not bring that, you know, inside my home. Cause like all my, my baby's play stuff is like in the living room and stuff. And then like I strip down um, to like my underwear and I like put on the gown that I have um, hang on uh, the wall. And then I like put the my uniform in a plastic bag and go all the way upstairs to put in the laundry and just, you know, turn it on real quick. Mm-hmm. Then afterwards I just take a shower to make sure I don't have like anything, any virus or anything on me. Yeah, okay. So you're really um, paranoid of it when whenever you come home. But you yeah, have to be, nice. you know, just to stay safe, especially in East Coast. Like I just saw the map that's like, it's filled with the virus out there, you know. I feel kind of yeah, bad. Yeah, definitely. Have you been um, updated with the John Hopkins map? Yeah, I've been. Looking I've been looking at the John Hopkins map and just, mm-hmm. just seeing the whole half of the, just seeing the whole East Coast is all red. It's pretty crazy, you know. Of course, California is getting yeah. there, but nothing compared to how New York is. Yeah, I just wish that like. Yeah, it's like getting really, really bad. But I kind of wish that like, uh, the virus didn't like you know we should stop completely flying for at least a couple days that's my take on it like to stop the virus because the virus is traveling because of the airline and because of like you know cars and everything but if the whole united states locked down and don't do anything for like a couple days i think it'll resolve the virus issue like to be honest with you it wouldn't grow as much but it is what it is you know yeah i agree you know we're gonna lose like tons of money in america but you know it's just like like the last podcast i did with um doris she um she was talking about how she there's a chance that she thought she probably thinks she caught the virus through the airplane like when she was sitting in the airplane coming back from hong kong because she didn't catch it in hong kong because none of her family had it when they were all over there because they Ooh. lived there you know but now it's like coming back to america she came home alone and suddenly she was feeling sick two weeks later, and that just shows that could have been the flight that that's where she caught it. Yeah, it could have been. I mean, um, she probably had like she probably touched something and or talked to somebody that was infected or mm-hmm. was sitting next to somebody who was infected too. So it was kind of scary. But nowadays, like you don't sit next to anybody; you sit by yourself in your own row. Yeah, I that would be pretty dope to actually have my own row. So I could sleep and I don't need to pay for first class and still have comfort. <laughs> yeah, dude. But it sucks for us because then like when we uh, non-rev travel, we don't we, we're not allowed to sit in first class anymore. We don't we can't get upgraded because um, uh, I guess the flight attendants who work first class, they were complaining about how many like how there's so many um, non-revs upgraded to first class and it's so jam packed mm-hmm. and it's not safe 
like they're not practicing social distancing yeah. and everything like that. So we're not allowed to upgrade anymore. Just for now, or it's like that's the new rules. Um, just for right now until COVID dies down. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, also it kind of sucks for us because now um I truly believe that I'm gonna get furloughed in September because you know how Trump said that there he's giving a grant to the airlines and saying that like. Oh, um, we're sa we're saving the airlines and we're giving them a loan and everything like that. But then apparently, like the Treasury of State or something, I, I'm not sure where I'm getting my facts. I probably read it on Facebook somewhere. But he based the Treasury of State basically said that like, no, I'm not going to give uh the 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 airline grants. They're going to get a loan or something like that. And um, the grant was supposed to pay the flight attendants to work. And then if we don't have that, then they have to like furlough a lot of flight attendants, which is about. I don't know, like a couple thousands and we'll be out of a job. So it's kind of scary. I'm on furlough. You guys are getting paid, but you guys are still a uh, employee, right? Or are, is that they're letting it's you go? Like laid off. Like we're laid off. Like we don't get paid anymore. We're just kind of like out of the job. But I mean, I still probably qualify for unemployment. Mm -hmm. But there's so many people who apply for unemployment. that yeah. It's a long have. process. Yeah, yeah, dude, it's really long. And okay. I have a lot of bills to pay. I don't know how I'm going to survive. I probably have to like move home, like mm. move back to California with my husband and my kid. Okay. So yeah. That's another mm -hmm. option if it comes down to it. But yeah, yeah, definitely. Even with coronavirus, say it's all over by August, but don't you think like travel will be like forever pretty stained for the whole year for 2020 travel? Yeah. Not much people are going to be traveling as much. To be honest, I don't think I'll be traveling out of country this year anymore okay. due to the coronavirus. Even if it cools down by August, I'm still going to be a bit skeptical of flying out there. The most I'll probably do is like a road trip around California. Like, mm -hmm. how do you feel about it? I mean, I think that uh, the coronavirus probably will die in the summertime because I don't know, maybe the heat will kill it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But um, of course, it's going to stay in the airline industry. Like a lot of people are going to be paranoid and scared of flying and catching something from either international or domestically. And then like, um, but I think that probably a year from now, next year, they're going to, they're it's, it's going to pick up. Like people will want to fly. Yeah. Like they, they're not going to be scared anymore once, you know, the news stop uh, airing COVID-19, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. People are going to forget about it. It's like old news. And, you know, a lot of people were going to go to vacation and travel. But, of course, they're going to be very, very careful as well. They'll yeah. be still wearing masks, gloves, and any protective gear that they need to protect themselves just to travel. It's just like, we're basically feeling the effect of how China was when they had SARS. It's like, this is our SARS in a way because now we're going to be prepared for the next one, you know, just like how for China. Because they were already prepared for SARS. The moment they hear about this outbreak, everyone already had their masks ready that they storage for a while. From what I hear from my other podcast, so I'm like, wow. So that's how we are right now. We're paranoid, but yeah. we're going to get through all this. But yeah. um, What's one thing yeah. you plan on doing once COVID-19 is over? I really, really want to take my son to go see his, uh, his uncle. He's never seen his uncle yet, and it's been five months. Um... I'm kind of like scared to take them on the flight and it's a too long of a drive to go over to the West coast from the East coast, just to visit his uncle. Yeah. So that's one thing I want to do. And then another thing would be like to, uh, travel and, you know, take off my bucket list. That I've been there already. So okay. yeah, that's about it. What about you? <laughs> hmm. When everything's over, well, I want to resume my travel because I was supposed to go to the Philippines this year, Hawaii, <gasps> Malaysia, oh Thailand, God. all these things. And then hopefully next year I could like go to Japan and all that. But, you know, with everything Dude, happening. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah. If you need like tips for Hawaii or something, like I could give it to you because then I used to live in Hawaii for like a year in oh, okay. 2013. Yep. Way back in the days. Okay. Yeah, way, way back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. All right. Yeah, I'll hit you up if any of those. But yeah, um, thanks for getting on, Tef. Um, let everyone know what your social media handle and where they can find you. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, my social media handle is Chief Tiffany. It's on uh, Instagram. That's all I have. And okay. thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. All right. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye.